Sri Lanka is an island south of India, which is divided between several ethnic groups, the most significant being the Tamils and Sinhala. There has been opposition between the two rising since Sri Lanka independence during the decolonization process, resulting in open warfare between the dominant Sinhala and the Tamils from the 1980s to the 2000s. During this conflict, the leading Tamil organization, generally considered a terrorist group of the Tamil Tigers, was able to hold down ground and operate captured armored fighting vehicles. They would eventually even make their own by combining elements from various captured vehicles. Welcome to this new Tank Encyclopedia video, I'm your host Tony, and the topic this time will be the very obscure but fascinating light tank which was created by the Tamil Tigers terrorist group of Sri Lanka. This vehicle is a bit of a Frankenstein's monster. If you know other similar vehicles that you like or want us to cover, please let us know in the comments. If you like our videos and want to support us, please consider donating on Patreon or Paypal. All of the funds will be used to improve future Tang Encyclopedia content. Any help would be greatly appreciated. The presence of a Tamil insurgency in Sri Lanka began in the early 1970s, with several movements groups struggling against the Sinhala-dominated government. One of these, the Tamil New Tigers, was founded in 1972 and would eventually become the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam, LTTE, in 1976. The group's goal was the creation of Tamil Elam, a Tamil state in the north and east of Sri Lanka. Though the first actions against Sri Lankan officials have been undertaken previously, the start of the Sri Lankan Civil War is generally considered to be an LTTE attack on a Sri Lankan army patrol in July 1983, which would lead to a large program against Tamils on the island, when several hundreds of thousands were killed. At this point, the Tamil insurgency grew in size considerably and notably, during the first phase of the conflict, would receive Indian support. The conflict would know four different phases separated by ceasefires. The first, from 1987 to 1990, after which a truce would be upheld by an Indian peacekeeping contingent. 1995 would see a 100 days truce separating the second and third parts of the conflict, with the third phase ending in 2002. By the end of this third phase, the Tamil Tigers had effectively managed to seize large portions of northeast Sri Lanka, where they were effectively able to operate as a de facto state. A ceasefire was brokered in February of 2002 and would last until July of 2006 when the Tamil Tigers closing access to a water reservoir to government controlled areas, cutting water supplies for thousands of villages. This led to a renewal of the large scale fighting. It was in this last phase of the conflict after the LTTE had held significant ground for years and would reasonably operate in ways more as a standing army than a pure guerrilla organization that armored fighting vehicles would be the most widely used by the rebel groups. The Tamil Tigers comprised a number of conventional and unconventional fighting forces. Before going deeper into their operations with armored fighting vehicles, it ought to be noted that these unconventional forces, including a wing which often engaged in suicide operations, the Black Tigers, would often resort to methods typically used by terrorist groups which would eventually lend the LTTE a classification as a terrorist group by the United States, European Union, Canada, India, and others over the years. It also ought to be noted that the ethnic and religious aspects of the conflict naturally resulted in large quantities of war crimes and executions of prisoners, or forced relocation being committed by both the LTTE and other rebel groups on one hand, and the Sri Lankan military on the other. The opposing Sri Lanka army operated a number of vehicles from many different sources, T-55s from Czechoslovakia, Saladin armored cars and Saracen armored personnel carriers from the UK, Type 63 and 85 armored personnel carriers and Type 59s from China, various MRAPs from South Africa, etc. With the rising size of the Tamil insurgency, some of these armored fighting vehicles used by the Sri Lankan army would start falling into the hands of the LTTE which was able to maintain them in service thanks to its ability to hold territory. The first known armored vehicles to fall into LTTE hands were two T-55s captured during a battle at the military base of Punyarin in northern Sri Lanka in November 1993. Although one of the vehicles would be swiftly knocked out of action by the Sri Lankan Air Force, the other would be in service for good. This would be the first of several T-55 tanks including some T-55AM2s which would fall into the hands of the LTTE and be re-employed by them. 
Other armored fighting vehicles used by the Sri Lankan military eventually fell into the hands of the LTTE. Notably, two FV-601 Saladin armored cars and four FV-603 Sarajan armored personnel carriers were known to have been captured at a Sri Lanka army base. A PMP-1 was captured during riots in August 1997. A number of Buffalo mine protected vehicles and other MPVs and at least one YW-531 were also captured. Some of these captured vehicles, notably the Buffaloes, would be subjected to local modifications with a variety of armaments including on one example a 40mm autocannon, likely a force, being installed. At the same time, LTTE workshops would begin creating their own armed or armored vehicles by converting existing mostly civilian chassis, equipping them with armament and armor plates. This included trucks and buses where the cargo or passengers compartment was converted into an armored cabin, some limited number of improvised mine resistant vehicles and some more classic technicals mounting armament on the back of pickup trucks. These field conversions would, for some of them, get more and more complex and advanced over time. Likely one of the very last performed would be a light tank created by combining elements of the FV-601 Saladin and a YW-531 armored personnel carrier. The light tank which was created by the LTTE was a combination of the turret of the FV-601 Saladin armored car with the hull of the YW-531 armored personnel carrier. The use of this type of turret very likely dated the vehicle conversion to after 1997 though so it may realistically be a lot later than that. Indeed, no footage of the vehicle in Tamil Tiger surface has appeared. The only footage to exist was after it was captured by the Sri Lankan army. The Sri Lankan army appears to call the vehicle BMT Armored Tank, the origin of this name being unknown. There was at least some imagery of the vast majority of armored vehicles known to have been used by the SLA in active LTTE service including some vehicles being spotted on several occasions in different places over the years, such as the LTTE sole known BMP-1. What information was available on the vehicle merely comes from a few known photos of it, which lend to some interesting indications on its design. Nonetheless, no internal views of the vehicle are known, nor any detail on its creation process. A likely possibility of the origin of this vehicle was that the LTTE possessed an unoperational FV-601 Saladin armored car with a usable turret. This turret was then mounted on the hull of an available YW-531, as a light tank armed with a 76mm gun was viewed as more valuable than an armored personnel carrier. This was not, however, a rush job, with both the hull and turret receiving some considerable modifications. The hull of the LTTE light tank was taken from a YW-531 armored personnel carrier. This original vehicle was a welded steel amphibious armored personnel carrier, armed with China's Type 54 12.7mm machine gun on a pintle mount. It had four road wheels with torsion bar suspension and moved through water with the movement of its tracks. The vehicle had a crew of two and an infantry complement of ten located to the rear of the hull. The engine was located to the right of the vehicle, between the driver and the infantry compartment. Armored protection was 14mm of armor at its thickest point. It has a length of 5.48m, a width of 2.98m, and a height of 2.58m. The length and width of the original YW-531A were likely the same on the hull of the LTTE light tank. The same could not, however, be said for the height. The hull of the light tank was considerably lowered though by exactly which amount is unknown. This appeared to have been performed by cutting off several vertical slices of the hull, the need for internal hull space likely being considerably diminished by the infantry carrying function of the vehicle being ditched. The engine on the converted vehicle appeared to have been moved from the front right to the rear of the vehicle. This was indicated by a few of the rear of the LTTE light tank where one could observe radiator grills which were installed on what was formerly the infantry's main door on the rear of the vehicle. This transformation was likely very much necessary, as the turret would otherwise likely have sat partially on top of the engine, an impossible configuration. The vehicle may retain the original engine of the YW-531, a Deutsch BF-8L413F diesel engine of German origin producing 320 horsepower. However, this could not be confirmed. The suspension did not appear to have received any change. 
It had sometimes been claimed that the LTTE light tank was not based on the YW531 slash Type 63, but rather on the later Type 85, procured in both APC and IFV models. The IFV model using the same turret as the ZBD86, itself a copy of the BMP1. The suspension disproved this claim entirely, as the later Type 85 ran on five road wheels. The crew configuration of the hull part of the LTTE light tank was not known. Logically, the vehicle would likely retain the ability to mount two crew members in front of the hull. On the YW531, this was the driver to the front left and commander to the front right. In turreted vehicle, as the LTTE light tank is, the commander was traditionally placed in the turret, and an aid driver might or might not be viewed as unnecessary and disposed of. However, seeing as the vehicle used a two-man turret, and as the LTTE was an unconventional force, it might be imaginable that the commander actually sat in the hull in the vehicle, with a gunner and loader in the turret. Some other changes could be observed on the hull. The original headlights of the YW531 were removed and replaced by some taken from a Saladin. The vehicle otherwise appeared to have two spare track links mounted at the rear of the hull, likely on each side. The turret installed on the LTTE light tank was taken from a captured FV601 Saladin armored car. This British armored car developed in the post-war era featured a two-man turret of welded construction, armored at 32mm at its thickest point. The main armament of the turret was Royal Ordnance L5A1 76mm gun. This was fairly a low-velocity gun centered around high-explosive HE and high-explosive squash that hash shells. It could also fire smoke and canister ammunition. Coaxially, the turret features an M1919A4 7.62mm machine gun. Smoke dischargers were present on both sides of the turret. As the hull, the turret used in the LTTE light tank did receive some considerable modifications, most notably the addition of a heavy machine gun on top of the turret in the shape of a 12.7 by 108mm Dushka M of Soviet origin, seemingly located on the axis of the turret. It would likely be operated by the loader, which may also assume the role of commander of the tank. Additionally, some form of sled armor appeared to have been applied on the turret sides from the mantlet all the way to the rear bustle. Curiously, this sled armor would impede the operations of the smoke grenade discharges, which had not, however, been removed from this vehicle. This video has been sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering all kinds of interesting subjects, from photography to 3D modeling, music production, and so much more. In fact, I and some of our team members are using Skillshare, and Turn is currently following a class covering Capture One by Kat Chadow, which is really helping her master editing these pictures she took in Rome. This class is full of convenient information that you can return to listening to whenever you want to, and is very intuitive and easy to understand. Now personally, what makes Skillshare special for me is that it is designed to give you an effective and pressure-free experience that will help you learn and discover knowledge. Skillshare doesn't display any ads, does not have any additional paywalls, no bait and switches, you are free to explore absolutely everything. And if it couldn't get any better, Skillshare is running a promotion. What kind of promotion? Well, the first 1000 subscribers that manage to click the link in the description below will get a 1 month free trial for Skillshare. The first 1,000 subscribers to use the link on our description box or use our code Tank Encyclopedia will get a 1 month free trial for Skillshare. Thank you for checking out Skillshare. Ads like these help us keep growing. And now, onto the video. A large number of factors to take into account made this hard to estimate, starting from the original weight of the YW531, 5.6 ton. The vehicle being lowered and inventory carrying capacities being removed would likely reduce the weight, but the addition of the turret as well as ammunition stowage would make it rise back up. The number of rounds available for the vehicle's three weapons was also unknown. Linked to the weight, the amphibious capacities of the vehicle were a mystery as well. The YW531 was fully amphibious and moved through water thanks to the movement of its tracks, not any device such as hydrojets. Cutting down parts of the hull and adding a turret would have some impact on the buoyancy. However, it was unknown whether or not it may be enough to make the vehicle incapable of floating or not. The maximum speed, power to weight ratio, etc. were likewise unknown. 
Even the crew composition was also unknown. The LTTE light tank likely had a crew of either three or four, which could not be confirmed. If the crew was of four members, whether the commander acted as the loader or remained in the hull is also in question. Whether the LTTE light tank saw any service within the forces of the Tamil Tigers is uncertain. In 2009, the Sri Lankan army launched a decisive offensive against LTTE holdouts, using its manpower and firepower advantage to its full extent and conducting essentially a large-scale military campaign which was able to decisively defeat the group. It was likely during this offensive that the LTTE light tank was captured by Sri Lankan army troops with all known photos of the vehicle dating from after its capture. With the death of the LTTE's leader and surrender of most of the group, the offensive also marked the end of the 25 years long Sri Lankan civil war. The LTTE light tank was part of a military exhibition in Kolombo. This was a celebration of the 60th anniversary of Sri Lankan army, held from 3rd to 7th October 2009. What fate it had been given as of now is unknown. While being a very obscure vehicle, it was also an incredibly interesting piece of equipment which had been given little to no attention. The Sri Lankan conflict was often ignored by Western viewers, many being more aware of the Middle East instead. The same could be said of the Tamil Tigers' conversions and armored vehicles in comparison to those of militant groups in Syria or Iraq, for example. This concludes our video on the Tamil Tigers' light tank. We hope you liked it. Don't forget to check our website where a longer article on this vehicle is available and our Patreon. And until next time, keep us in your sights.